Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. So today's video isn't necessarily the one I planned, but might as well do what's happening. Um, I've had to do a bit of an impromptu rescue. So either last week's video or a couple of weeks ago, I talked about my office tank and how it had a Senegal Bacher and a Black Ghost knife fish in it and I wanted some more movement. And I tried the Dwarf Neon Rainbows um, I've had to move them into this tank because I've just caught the bicher snacking on one of them. So I've got these guys in here for the moment in the Discus and Mabu tank. Um, hopefully they'll be okay there. I mean this tank is a degree or two warmer than the other one but they seem okay so far. And there's the Mabu as well. If you stay tuned to the end of the video we'll give him a bit of a feeding because I know that's what everybody really wants to see. Um, yeah, but he's looking good and growing well. And the tank in general, I think, if you've been following over the last few weeks, if you haven't, please remember and subscribe. Um, the algae is definitely getting under control. I mean, there are still some traces there, but I think we're getting there. So today's video was going to be about more about this tank and stabilising it. So we've talked about lighting, we've talked about plants, we've talked about... Um, water changes and various things, trying to get the algae under control and CO2 which we've got down there. Not necessarily an algae control but just trying to get some kind of stability in the tank. I was going to add an auto dozer today for the fertilizers just to make sure that that was really, really consistent. Um, but yeah, I've had to do a wee rescue mission on these guys. So this is the tank that I'm talking about. I, I normally sit over there, this is my office where I work. Um, and I was sat there looking across at this tank and I just happened to notice a little head float past without a body and it was the head of uh, one of those dwarf neon rainbow fish so the head floated past and then the bicher he had a little swim past as well with the body in his mouth chomping down on that quite happily there he is there the murderous get so a lot of people that I've been talking to on various forums and Facebook groups and things like that had said that they had had success with the rainbow fish, um, keeping them with a Senegal Bicher before, but obviously it's not going to work with mine. So it's always a bit of a trial and error. I mean, he's been in, they've been in there a couple of weeks with them and no problems before, but yeah, he's obviously flipped and taken a murderous raid. So everyone has been advising me so far that if you're going to keep other fish with this this type of fish you want something that's either too big for them to worry about or too fast for them to be able to do anything about so i'm wondering what option that leaves me with i can either go for something like a flower horn um, or some other kind of south american cichlid in here this tank in itself it's it's a three foot cube but it's not quite three foot high but it's three foot wide three foot deep so it's a decent water volume in there so i talked about maybe some kind of south american cichlid or possibly African cichlids in there, some of the smaller ones, and changing all this into a nice rockscape. So I think that's pretty much the last chance for this murderous get, otherwise he's going in a tank on his own and we can just enjoy him that way. But a few people now, a few different people have told me that this should work if we go for the African cichlids. I've never kept them before, so this will be a new experience for me and it's all about learning, isn't it? So I think I'm going to keep everything the same substrate-wise. Let me spin you around and show you. So this is kind of my view from my office when I'm working. Um, I think I'm going to clear out all the shells, clear out all the plants, but leave the kind of sand and gravel mix as it is. I've got a few big rocks and pots in there at the moment. And I think what I'll do is I'll build them up with a few more rocks and have them into the back corner that way and kind of spreading out to the sides here. So there's lots of nooks and crannies for fish to hide in and get away from each other and create territories and all that good stuff. But there's also quite a bit of swimming space up at this end as well. So that should work. Uh, I won't bore you with the time lapse, but I'm basically going to rip everything out and then we should have a blank canvas to start from. So the other thing I was considering for there was possibly another group of puffers. But I think we're a bit puffer heavy on the channel at the moment. Uh, I've got the smallest puffers in the world, the pea puffers behind me. I've got the biggest puffers, the Mabu puffer in the big tank. So I think we'll keep it like that for a while, but it's definitely something I'm interested in in the future. It's having a, a kind of group of, a community group of puffers together. I think that'd be really cool. But for now, we'll stick with Africans and um, the cichlids. 
I think that's the way to go because I've not done it before like I say. So I have had a look at my local fish stores and there's nothing really there that I'm interested in. Um, I could probably find something at Wharf or somewhere a little bit further afield but I think we'll go online again and have a look and see what's available. I thought I'd just show you through my process. So the first place I usually check out is eBay. I've got a few of my favourite sellers that I will look for. Um, but what we're looking for is... It's not spelled like that. What we do is generally look for the things that I want and if any of my favourite sellers come up selling it or ones that I know or it's a particularly good deal um, I'll have a look at it. So what I'm looking for now is Pseudotrophia Solosi. They're one of the smaller cichlids and um, they're quite good to keep in a group, quite fast. Smaller cichlid but bigger than your dwarf neon rainbows so hopefully out of the, the range of something that looks like a meal for a Senegal basher. So for here for instance you've got Pseudotrophia Solosi Coral Red um, so we're talking £9 there for one and £15 postage. Yeah. Um, Kesgrave Tropicals. Kesgrave Tropicals. I have used them before in the past. Uh, I've been quite unlucky with them once, I think. I don't think it was the fault of the buyer at all, but um, something happened in post and I lost a load of neon tetras, possibly, or was it Corridoras? I can't remember. Anyway, fairly happy enough to use them again, but I kind of want six, eight fish here. I don't want to be spending the earth on them, and these will be tiny. This is a library picture, it's not necessarily what it's going to look like. So I'm just kind of having a look at what else is going on there. So Chindongo Salosai, 10 of, for £76. I don't know that fish, so I need to do a little bit more research on them. This is kind of what I'll do, just work down um, to see if there's anything that pops up to grab me and as you can see not a whole hell of a lot so I might go and have a look at another website. So this is Tropco, you've seen me do a video on these guys before um, again just look for the fish that you're interested in, I'm not sure what they would be under uh, ah, Rift Lake and other African cichlids so I've seen this before, they do these uh, mix cichlids starter pack kind of things and I guess if you don't know much about them that probably seems like a good idea um, I would say the best idea is to go and talk to someone that's into African cichlids and has kept them for a while there's loads of groups on Facebook that will happily bore you to tears for hours and hours talking about these things um, but some of these do seem good value but again find out what it is you really want and buy what you really want rather than just getting a mix of stuff and being stuck with a load of fish. Um, but I kind of do want a load of fish so that might be the way to go. Um, but these are assorted cichlids so you can't get to pick the ones you get and if I end up with some big massive ones in that tank that's not going to be any good at all so I really need to pick the ones that I want to make sure I'm not getting anything that's grown to grow too big. Um, but if we have a look around here I mean, many of these I know, so obviously the frontosas and things like that, I'm not going to be getting a big group of them, or the dolphin cichlids, the the moorais, and they're going to get far too big. But some of these smaller ones, um, like the melanochromis, I think they stay quite, or nimblechromis, they're quite small. Um, and there's some of the pseudotrophias down here. So, we've got pseudotrophias zebra red, 5 centimeters, 10 centimeters, and 7 centimeters, and red fin at 10 centimeters. So there's a, a bit of a selection there. Yellow labs, your classic yellow labs always look nice as well. And this is the reason I'm looking at cichlids because you end up looking at a group of fish that can have colors like this, which is perfect for brightening up a tank. So again, this isn't a video sponsored by Tropco or anything like that. I just happen to be using that website because I've used it before. But most of them are generally the same. You'll get a little bit of a care sheet here. They'll describe the fish, the requirements, all that kind of stuff. So all important stuff. Um, these ones, so they're talking here about the various different colour morphs. They're calling these community cichlids with caution. The other Mbunas. Um, 
imagine they'll all be the same. Yeah, so it's really just a case of picking what I want, but again, these are quite expensive fish. So with uh, cichlids, I understand it's quite important to get the male-female ratio right. Sometimes you can't get that right and have to let it develop over time, which means you end up swapping fish around. Um, I'm not seeing anywhere here that you're allowed to, or you're being offered the chance to sex the fish or choose males or females. But they do talk about how it is important to get that right. They're talking, they're talking about crowding the tank to reduce aggression and that kind of thing. So that's also important with the providing lots of hiding spaces and that kind of stuff. Um, I like this little guide here that they've got of what they are compatible with and what they're not compatible with, and sometimes compatible with. Um, so the only thing that these are actually compatible with is other rift and African cichlids. Um, but they do talk about sharks, rainbow fish, catfish, loaches, plecos, gourmets, dwarf cichlids, eels, and bristlenose catfish being compatible species. Um, I'm not seeing a space there for anything that would come under the class of black ghost knife fish or... Surmanese murder fish. So it will go much like that for a number of weeks sometimes where I dither and dally about which exact fish that I want to keep in there. So the Africans, they do certainly interest me. Um, obviously I need to get the pH a little bit higher so I need to do a little bit more research and a little bit more consideration on the effects of the fish that I want to keep in there at the moment and the fish that I can move into it. And I just don't know. I'm not finding the exact one. So I wanted Pseudotrophy as Solosi. Um, I'm not finding them anywhere. I'm not finding them at any of the shops that I've got at the moment. And that's often the way. The one that you want is the one that's rarer and it's not around. Not that it's necessarily a rare fish, but whenever you want it, it's not available. So I'll keep an eye on the various places. It used to be a little bit easier when Facebook were a little bit more relaxed about their rules but since they've clamped down on selling fish on Facebook it's there's not as many people swapping locally or selling locally and all the groups are clamping down on selling fish in case they get closed obviously. So I'm saying this with the current inhabitants still in mind so we've got the um, the murderous uh, Senegal Baisher, we've got the frankly stupid black ghost knife fish that just bumbles about quite happily they don't necessarily have to stay in there, so if I come up with a better plan, they might get moved out into another tank as well. Um, but I'd like to keep them in there. Um, and the options that I'm considering, with or without those current inhabitants, is a group of puffers, uh, so probably without those inhabitants, a group of African cichlids of some kind. I've got through the trophy of Solosi on my mind just because of some of the smaller, more peaceful ones, but there are other more peaceful ones which I think might be uh, a good thing and there's lots of movement with those as well or something a bit different whether it's um, some South American cichlids so Firemouths, um, Oscars, that kind of thing the Oscars probably not because they're a bit too big but some of the smaller ones possibly Jack Dempsey's um, something along those lines, Flowerhorn, all that kind of crazy stuff um, the tank itself I think is about 250 litres or something like that so it's a fairly big tank um, it's just an awkward shape because it's a big square so it's not necessarily lots of swimming space side to side but there is lots for uh, going round. Maybe I'll put a little uh, poll up here or you can leave me some comments in the community page I'll put something in there as well if you've got any ideas or something you'd like to see me keep in these tanks um, let me know. So let's get back to the main event I'm sure what you all want to see. We've got some at the moment ram's horn snails and a cockle, which we've just dropped on the floor. So we're going to put these in. The, the diet that I'm trying to get the Mabu onto is uh, a couple of breeding projects I've just started. I mentioned again in a previous video, I've got some escargot snails and some uh, locusts, baby locusts, that I'm trying to get a breeding project going. So I'll feed them to my lizards anyway. Um, I haven't really got the Mabu to be interested in them yet. I've tried a couple of times and you just kind of looked at it like no well, thank you, don't know what that is, not interested. So the technique that I'm using to try and do that is he really likes the cockles. It's to get him, as you can see, this is him here. He gets a little bit excited when he sees his food coming. 
So the technique that I've been using is making him chase it for a little while and then he really attacks it. So the theory is that I then swap this out for something that I want him to eat. And he attacks that and realises it is, it's a delicious locust, I'll eat that as well. So, as you can see, he sees his dinner and gets a little bit excited. So we'll put it in. And the discus will try and nick it straight away. Get off, it's for this guy. As you can see, he really goes for it. And then we just let him have it. Then there's a little bit of a squabble. Normally I feed the discus before I feed this guy. But, oomph, that's it, it's gone. All done. So let's drop in some of these snails. Similar thing, I don't know whether he'll eat these now because he's had the... Um, he's had the cockle. The discus are just ravenous, they're always trying to eat everything. But they'll ignore the snails and then the mabu can come down. And even if he doesn't eat them now, the good thing about these ones is that he can pick them up afterwards. But there you go, he's had one. Get out of the way, fish. Yeah, so even if he doesn't eat all the snails now, the snails will just wander away and they can be a snack for later on. But he's certainly putting on the timber. For those of you that are following along, the tests on this tank, they've actually stabilised out. Um, the only test that was showing nitrates, or high nitrates, was the JBL test. And well, that has actually dropped, I think it started off showing something like 90, it's gone down to about 75 or 60, something like that, at the moment, and then it's levelled off there, whereas the other ones are all showing less than 5 parts per million for nitrates. Um, it's crazy the amount of tests. So I've got four different test kits three of which show nitrates being very low and one showing them very high, so <laughs> it's a bit crazy. Um, obviously there are too many, or there were too many nutrients in the tank, because I was getting a lot of algae, but yeah, seems to be under control now. Look at that, discus are attacking that snail. I've never seen them eat a snail before. You're not getting fed enough, guys. Anyway, like I say, I'm happy with the way this tank is going, um, so we'll just leave it there for now. So let me know in the comments or in the community tab if I post a poll up there. Let me know what you think I should keep in that other tank, in the office tank. Because uh, I'm interested to know what people would be interested in. I'm very interested to be interested. As always, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and then you can make sure you find out what we end up choosing and putting in that tank. Uh, click the bell if you don't want to miss anything and thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!